Well, thank you very much um, for joining today while I talk a little bit about the Odyssey uh, Coordinating Center at Columbia. I'm George Ripsack. I'm Chair of Biomedical Informatics at Columbia and Director of the Coordinating Center. So first, a couple of slides on the department that uh, runs the Coordinating Center. So it's the Department of Biomedical Informatics represented here. In our midst, you'll see a few uh, Odyssey people, Patrick on the left, Karthik, Noemi, et cetera, in this uh, slide that we took during one of our retreats. Interesting fact, just fun to show. I know I don't usually get an opportunity to show this kind of thing. So apparently we started doing informatics in 1916, which is a fun time when we started. Uh, the the uh, medical record was developed largely at Mayo, uh, but it wasn't really deployed. Presbyterian Hospital, our New York Presbyterian Hospital, ended up being the one that disseminated the medical record around the nation where we went from service-based to patient-based records. So that was fun. But our modern era started uh, in 1987 with our center and became a department in, in 1994, uh, which made us the second oldest department, at least in the US, of, of medical informatics then biomedical informatics. Here's kind of a run-up of our department. Like, 45 faculty members, if you count everybody and all adjuncts, maybe like 27 full-time uh, total with 25 PhD students, some masters and postdocs and developers, managers. That's a little, it's probably 30 there. Our annual budget's around 18 million total uh, today. And we're squished into a small space, a small but nice space on the top of uh, Presbyterian Hospital. What do we do? Well, we did social network analysis on ourselves to figure out who are we. And we have our data scientists, our social scientists who do human factors, and our engineers who build things. And that kind of comprises our department. Most people do more than one thing. Final slide on this. And uh, Odyssey started at the end of 2014. Here's a and a uh, picture from the terrace. So we are on the top floor of the hospital building. So we get this terrace. You can see downtown Manhattan in the background. And that's a uh, number of people have been at Odyssey since the beginning shown here. Another fun thing is if you stand there, the person who took the picture that you see there, if they just shifted to the left and looked in the window, that's what you see on the lower left. And that's our collaboration space, kind of like a conference room where we gather together. And in the background, you see a painting on the wall, and that's a very large painting of drug treatment paths by Sean Williams, commissioned by Patrick Ryan. So that is where we can uh, demonstrate our commitment to Odyssey and show off to visitors uh, Odyssey when they visit our floor. So now let's get to Odyssey. Our mission, remember, we always review to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. Uh, here's our current map, Columbia Department of Biomedical Informatics shown there in the little uh, yellow uh, star. Just to review, I know that the people on this call mostly know, but we have new users, so let's go through it. This is how our community works. Uh, we, it's, we're built, uh, it's a voluntary open science uh, collaboration. We have open community data, shown in orange, open community data standards, open source development, methodologic research, clinical evidence generation, all voluntary uh, work group, uh, voluntary efforts largely driven by our work groups. On the left, we see we have a set of data partners overlapping with our developers, uh, a set of data partners. Each one has its local data that we convert to our common data model shown in the middle there. And then we share our, um, and, and we share standardized analytics. When we want to carry out a network study shown in blue, uh, we share the protocol around the world. People voluntarily run it, send the answers back to data.sorodyssey.org. Then we collaboratively interpret the evidence and collaboratively publish the results, usually with a lot of authors. So I'm talking about how we work, and there's many databases, there's many developments, and all of this requires a certain amount of infrastructure and coordination, and that's what the Coordinating Center provides. So just showing you here a little bit more graphically, I'm going to start from the center, the Coordinating it Center itself, and work my way outwards, as you'll see in a moment. 
So the coordinating center's role is to provide central shared infrastructure and coordinated community activities to enable the community collaborations that advance our mission. Uh, we lead the steering work group to provide guidance and support to enable that uh, evidence generation and the scientific work products. Now, outside the Corning Center, we have the leadership of Odyssey. Out, some, some happen to be at Columbia, but they're generally around the world. Work group and chapter leads, project maintainers, study coordinators, event hosts, and so on, uh, working together to drive Odyssey forward. Our role in supporting them, uh, we uh, support that mission to promote by promoting ongoing activities and uh, encouraging uh, participation and contributions from other collaborators and empowering more collaborators to eventually become leaders. And the mechanisms by which I, we do this, I'll show in a moment. Outside the leadership, we have the collaborators, that is, you know, Odyssey proper. Uh, we're an open and inclusive community of individuals with diverse backgrounds and disciplinary uh, perspectives, and our membership is open and free. You just need to sign up. Our role in this is to maintain the infrastructure and provide support uh, to connect collaborators with their opportunities. And we use things like forms, MS Teams, Git repositories, the symposium, and so on to support this. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a moment. We also encourage visitors to become collaborators. Then outside of this, we have the visitors, which are people outside of the Odyssey community who are encouraged to benefit from the work we do. Um, we, we aim to generate uh, evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care for everyone, not just our collaborators, of course. Uh, so we provide access to our evidence and to our work products, including our standardized vocabularies, our open source software. We always share our study designs and implementation and free access not only to our results, but to our diagnostics. And we aim to expand awareness and the impact that is dissemination of Odyssey's work around the world in the larger uh, healthcare ecosystem. So we're gonna go through some of the tasks we carry out in this diagram in these five components, uh, all based on kind of this lower level of fostering collaboration and empowering the community. First, about stewarding open community data standards. So one is maintenance and release of Odyssey standardized vocabularies. As you well know, many of you, uh, we have 10 million concepts in our vocabulary, taking from almost over 100 vocabularies with 76 million concept relationships. As you can imagine, uh, many or most of these vocabularies change on an ongoing basis. So keeping this all coordinating uh, and doing all these updates uh, is an enormous job. And then I'll come back to how we do that in a moment, but that's an enormous task. The vocabulary is well used. We had 35,000 downloads in 2021, 15,000 so far in 2022, just beyond the first quarter. And uh, we update the vocabulary frequently with 26 releases in 2021. So, oh, more often than one every two weeks. The team that does that is shown here, taken again from around the world. You see Odysseus on the right, Data Services, which is our vendor that does much of our vocabulary work, and of course, the Odyssey Vocabulary subgroup. And the people involved in those uh, two activities shown here, uh, the faces shown here, the coordinating center both participating in that and paying for services that need to be paid for. Also involved in the stewardship and advocacy of the OMOP common data model here, the schema being shown. Recall, we went through this in uh, at the fall symposium, 331 databases, 34 countries, and eight and um, health records on 810 million unique patients from around the world. So over 10% of the world population encoded in the OMOP common data model. <coughs> And this is carried out by our work group, and uh, I'll be talking about our support for the work groups in a moment. There's also a role in the stewardship and advocacy of the common data model as an open community data standard, namely supportive adoption of this model outside the Odyssey community to other large multi-center initiatives such as all of us and eMERGE, which you'll see in a few slides, has benefits back for the Odyssey community. Furthermore, more, 
the, the uh, coordinating center works on collaborations with other organizations, such as the HL7 Standards Organization, where uh, through Ed Hammond, Chuck Jaffe, and I signed, for example, uh, a collaborative agreement between HL7 and Odyssey working on the FIRE and OMOP uh, common data standards. That activity is in full force, led by Christian Reich, and uh, largely focused on mapping and things like that although with an idea for the future where we would share knowledge engineering uh, so that it's not like HL7 does it and we do it and then we have to map it. So it's three times the work, why not share our knowledge engineering so we do it once. Now moving to uh, enabling open source development. Uh, the coordinating center maintains the computing environment for continuous integration testing of all open source tools, including Hades and the web API Atlas. So, for example, <coughs> excuse me, hosting servers to enable open source development and continuous integration testing on our platforms like SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, Redshift. Also, hosting the Nexus repository for Odyssey Web API resources. Lee Evans shown his photo shown on the lower right. So, providing the infrastructure and where necessary, um, the resources that is payment uh, to carry out those services. We also enable the community open source software development through the GitHub repository support, including so that one is support for the repository, but two is the permissive licensing and having an institution who looks after Odyssey's rights on the copyright side of an open copyright. Hosting the Atlas demonstration environment. So this is specifically, I mean, the Atlas environment uh, where anyone or visitors can log in. We maintain that environment to provide unrest unrestricted access to visitors to learn more about the platform and try it out. It provides access to the latest Atlas version, the most recent vocabulary, and multiple synthetic databases to give them that experience. We have 17,000 concept sets, 10,000 cohort definitions, and so on there for people to um, uh, experience how Atlas works. Now I'm gonna to shift to talking about facilitating methods research and clinical applications. So this, now this is a separate Atlas environment. This one, the other one was atlasdemo.odyssey.org. This is atlas.odyssey.org. This is our collaborative environment where we do work. We maintain security enabled Atlas environments to facilitate collaboration and allow for read-only access to our final cohort definitions, say that we use in network studies, um, and the study artifacts. Over 400 cohorts to find on atlas.odyssey.org. For example, in phenotype uh, February this year, 100 collaborators use the atlas uh, phenotype.odyssey.org uh, website. We also support uh, Odyssey network studies for clinical evidence generation in the form of the 90 studies repositories that sit on uh, GitHub. So the definitions of our studies, in addition to open source software, there's our, in effect, open source study definitions that sit on GitHub. Now, let me separate from what I'm talking about a different role that Columbia plays. Columbia is also um, a collaborating partner, like many sites on the call beyond our coordinating center responsibilities, that is we're data hub and so on. So we've led multiple Odyssey network studies and treatment pathways, some of the legend hypertension studies, concept presidents, the prevalence, HERA. We've developed open source tools like Phoebe and criteria to query. We've been an active participant, data partner. We try to do it in all Odyssey network studies um, and we've accomplished it, I think in most studies. So these are things that I'm talking about that are separate from our role as the coordinating center. And when I talk about resources in a little while, I'm gonna separate those two activities. Next, let's talk about encouraging open sharing and, dis and evidence dissemination by the coordinating center. We host the Odyssey R Shiny servers for open sharing of results. So we maintain the R Shiny server, and the supporting backend databases that contain all the results. We have 134 shiny applications on data.odyssey.org, including Legend, Charybdis, and others, again maintained by Lee Evans shown there. We 
also create and maintain service for Odyssey community training and hackathon events. So we create shared Atlas instances and sometimes Odyssey in a box training service for tutorials and community activities. In 2021 alone, we created 100 instances of um, Atlas or Odyssey in a box. And last, me, let's let me go to fostering collaboration and empowering the community. Big one is the annual Odyssey Symposium, where we host and fund logistics, hotel, food, audiovisual for the annual global symposium, including main conference tutorials and workshops. The last um, in-person event, we had over 500 registrants and 100 tutorial students. At our virtual symposium, we had over 1,600 uh, registrants. Shown here is the page for 2022. We do note that we did make a switch. In the past, uh, we had, quote, free registration uh, soliciting contributions. We switched to a registration fee with the ability to um, forego the registration fee by simply contacting us. So it's still available for everyone regardless of funding, and if you're students and so on out there, I emphasize those italics there, which say, just call, just let us know and you'll have free registration. But otherwise, registration fee, which we set at a level that was about one third to one half of what we saw of other conferences to help defray some of the costs of running the symposium this year. We maintain the online forums and wiki for open community interactions. So the discourse server for forums.odyssey.org, over 3,000, well, about 3,000 users, 4,000 posts last year, 100,000 page views. That is not growing as fast as it might have because we switched largely for our work to MS Teams, shown here, for the community with over 30 active work groups and 74 teams, 5,000 users. Jody Ann and Elise shown here as uh, behind uh, organizing that work. So that was a big shift in our work environment. We facilitate the weekly Odyssey community calls. Obviously we're here now, Craig Saxon's photo shown on the lower right. So we lead the community calls to communicate where we've been, where we're now, where we're going. We generally have in the order of 150, as many as 250 participants weekly uh, since 2021. We provide a monthly newsletter and on the journey podcast, mostly Patrick and Craig, um, to highlight our accomplishments and future collaboration opportunities with over 3,000 readers. We produced an annual, we started producing an annual report, Our Journey, uh, led by Craig, uh, highlighting our community accomplishments and impact. It's been fun creating that resource. And we communicate Odyssey activities across social media with um, thousands of followers. We hope for that to grow over time. Now switching gears a little bit, those are the things that the Coordinating Center does. Let's look at the resources it takes and how we pay for this. Coordinating Center component costs over a million dollars per year. So Odyssey is a um, voluntary effort. We've come completed many, many lines of code, many estimates generated largely on the volunteer time of people around the world. And we couldn't have done that uh, without all that voluntary effort. However, facilitating that effort is still a large expense in itself, over a million dollars. And as I talked about before, I'm separating the cost of Odyssey being a data node. So this, none of this is into the Odyssey database or any of the studies that we do. And it assumes that I and Patrick Ryan donate our time towards the effort like everybody else voluntarily. These are our hard costs that we can't move to other locations. If you look at the pie chart, the single biggest cost is our vocabulary costs, uh, which is uh, over a, a quarter, getting up towards a third. Our symposium follows closely behind and software development infrastructure is another quarter. So that represents the vast majority of our costs for Odyssey every year. In addition, there are some smaller costs like our costs of running our communications on behalf of Odyssey around the world and a little bit on project management 
and a smaller amount on administrative costs. How do we pay for this? Well, one category our sponsorship is sponsorships and contracts from industry and academics shown here. I'm sorry if I missed any group. I've tried to identify the, the groups that have uh, put forward, say, symposium sponsorships, other kinds of donations and contracts. Um, you know, last year, because it was virtual and it was largely based on our symposium because it was virtual. And because we didn't pursue it so actively, our total here was about $35,000. In previous years, it was on the order of $100,000. So a small portion of that total gets done through sponsorships and contracts. Our single biggest uh, donation was $400,000 in the past, not recently. Second, we have grants related to our symposium and related things. So the FDA is the current sponsor to our symposium, which pays $100,000, which is you know, critical for our success, although it doesn't pay even for half the symposium costs. But still, we couldn't do it without it. In the past, PCORI um, was paying for our symposium, had a similar grant, and AHRQ has helped out in other ways. An important part of our success has been providing infrastructural support for several projects that contribute to the necessary general infrastructure. So Odyssey is a convener as part of FDA's uh, biologics division their best initiative. And so we help them on a number of areas, convening those are meetings and tutorials, as well as helping them with methods research. And part of what comes out of that is some support for the general infrastructure. Similarly, we're part of the coordinating center for the All of Us Research Program. And that also in our work with them ends up contributing to the general infrastructure. Emerge Network also based on the model N3C, the National COVID Cohort Collaborative, and Long COVID, the PASC initiative, all help us in some ways contributing. And lastly, research grants, where I have the opportunity to do it, and with permission, I'll sometimes get a, a supplement or something that helps me carry forward the work of Odyssey, including contributing to the necessary general infrastructure. So uh, raising a million dollars a year is actually a pretty big task uh, to carry out. Sometimes I feel like, you know, either I or some parts of my department are less active than other contributors to Odyssey that we see on these weekly calls. And, you know, sometimes I feel like the working spouse whose kids come to him and say, where were you? It's like, well, I was working three jobs trying to get this thing to run. So we're doing this. But the problem is it's not sustainable if we want to grow. Perhaps we can sustain this, but we actually want to grow. We're having our success and we need to do it slightly differently. So Odyssey is expanding in, in number of collaborators, so the size of our organization. It's expanding in the scope of what we do, so we do new things. It's expanding in people who use our products outside of Odyssey. And it's expanding in its impact. I can name three examples right offhand of where we affected the lives of hundreds of millions of people through papers that we published. We want to sustain and grow the community, but we need to adopt a more mature funding model. So what we're doing is launching a new sponsorship model for Odyssey, which differs from the past model in three ways. Number one, it's larger scale. So just looking for more money and seeing that it takes up a larger, first growing the pot, so we have $2 million to invest in Odyssey instead of $1 million, say, and also um, uh, just increasing the amount that the community um, that has the money to contribute and that benefits from Odyssey can contribute. Second, we're switching from a model where really we've been seeking sponsorship for the symposium, we want to go beyond that and support all our broad central activities, not just the symposium, including the symposium, but not just that. And third, we're looking to do more active solicitation. That is, our, our um, solicitation model has been largely passive, and we're looking for a more active uh, approach to reaching out to those who potentially benefit from Odyssey and might be willing to contribute to it more. Craig Saxon has launched the website for Odyssey sponsorship, shown uh, in summary in these screens, um, which gives, uh, and thank you, Craig, for a beautiful 
uh, website. For right now, we started with three sponsorship levels, gold, silver, and bronzes off the bottom of the screen there. Set at $500,000, $125,000 per year. $500,000 per year is more or less, if you look at one of our earliest contributions, which is large, and then you do some inflation adjustment, that's about the largest contribution we've gotten in our history. And then going down to 100 and then 25. And seeking, being very active in seeking organizations that benefit enough from Odyssey that this kind of contribution um, is reasonable and beneficial to them. There are things we offer where the, our, our mo it's modeled after other open source, open communities. This part of the website shown on the left talks about the logo, press releases, access to Odyssey, uh, recognition, inclusion, listing, and so on. On the right hand side, and it goes on beyond that, it's the cut off so that you could just see this much. Explanation of why you should sponsor Odyssey, uh, how to do it. We welcome uh, contributions of any size, of course, but looking to focus a little bit more on these larger ones from organizations who are able to do it. Uh, so if there's anyone on the call from a large organization that's able to do it, we certainly welcome that. And we welcome people helping us reach out to organizations who might be willing to sponsor Odyssey and allow us to grow uh, in the future. We want to support all the voluntary work that goes on. And, um, and we followed, as I said, as a model of other successful large open source efforts. And that's how we came to this place.